let me speak recovery when you have lost things you don't need advancement you need recovery first some of you have lost money some of you have lost connections some of you have lost favor some of you have lost many things you have even lost the secrets that protect your grace you have lost the secrets that protect your anointing you've lost the secrets that protect your relevance i pray for you in the name of jesus tonight let there be a recovery let there be a recovery let there be restoration i speak it to you receive restoration receive recovery in the name of jesus christ for many of us here what has kept us down is ignorance i shared some of them today to liberate you but the journey must be ongoing i pray for you the right information needed in this season to bail you out of a life of ignorance and stagnancy access those materials access those information access those materials access those information in the name of jesus christ there are principles that make for the believers wholesome growth the believer does not just become the believer does not just emerge there are spiritual principles that if you follow diligently you will eventually emerge a giant in the spirit now theologically there are four encounters that everybody must have who desires to do business with god you desire to be a man of stature in the spirit there are four principal encounters that you must have let me run through them very quickly i need to lay that as a foundation for you to understand what i'll be discussing tonight four encounters number one is called an encounter with jesus the son of the living god very simple but profound in order of priority it is important that this begins your series of encounters an encounter with jesus the son of the living god this is the first encounter that anyone intending to be a believer intending to walk with god must have if you do not encounter jesus the son of the living god there's no possibility for your salvation not to talk of transformation and your emerging are we together the benefit uh, and, and please listen this is for your knowledge most believers know that salvation is connected to that encounter but they do not even know what they receive at salvation there are three gifts that every man receives at salvation number one is called the forgiveness of sin number one the first gift you receive when you encounter jesus the son of the living god at salvation is not eternal life it is the forgiveness of sin number two the second gift that you receive is called the nature of righteousness and then the third gift you receive is called the life of god what you call eternal life the way it is called please do not forget this that when you encounter jesus the son of the living god you have the privilege of accessing these threefold gifts number one the forgiveness of sins and that gives way that you receive afterwards the gift of righteousness and then you receive finally the life of god what you call zoe john 10 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy then the bible says but i am come the i being jesus that ye may have zoe that life and that you have it more abundantly amplified says to its fullest so this is the first of four cardinal encounters that you must have number two the second encounter that every believer must have if you want to rise in the spirit and become a person of stature and to be relevant as far as God's program is concerned is an encounter with the spirit of the living God. An encounter with the person and the office of the Holy Spirit. In as much as the Holy Spirit plays a role in your being saved, there is a separate unique encounter with the person and the ministry of the holy spirit hallelujah and there are a number of blessings that follow that encounter number one when you encounter the holy spirit you have the privilege of guidance and direction you have the privilege of empowerment 
the privilege of guidance and direction when he the spirit of truth is come jesus was teaching he says he will guide you into all truth guide you into all truth hallelujah he said i have many things to tell you jesus was speaking to the disciples but ye cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth so when you have an encounter with the person and the ministry of the holy spirit you receive guidance you receive direction and then you receive empowerment how god anointed jesus of nazareth acts chapter 10 and verse 33 38 with the holy ghost and with power he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him are you ready for the third the third encounter that you need to have is an encounter with the word of god the word of god not as a person the word of god the logos the thoughts of god the wisdom of god it is called an encounter with the word of god as a compendium of god's wisdom a compendium of the modus operandi of the kingdom it's important for you to understand how the kingdom functions and that the dealings of god and his ways are captured in scripture when you have an encounter with the word of god the bible says in john uh, matthew 4 and verse 4 that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the lord hallelujah very very important an encounter with the word of god this is where you receive the wisdom of god the wisdom of god there is such a dimension of wisdom called the hidden wisdom of god it is also called the wisdom of the just the bible says that wisdom has been prepared for the revelation of the glory of god in the saints are we together the hidden wisdom of god ordained for our glory you will never be able to access the glory of god in experience until you encounter the word of god so a quick recap four encounters number one jesus the son of the living god receiving from that encounter forgiveness of sin the gift of righteousness and abundant life number two an encounter with the person and the ministry of the holy spirit receiving guidance direction and empowerment number three an encounter with the logos of god the wisdom of god teaching you the ways of god showing you the ancient path that leads to your sabbath and then number four many believers have not encountered this fourth dimension and this is my assignment tonight many have encountered jesus the son of the living god evidently so many have encountered the holy spirit evidently so many have encountered the word of god in various dimensions the last and the final encounter is called an encounter with the body of christ hmm. an encounter with the body of christ an encounter with the body of christ thank you jesus first corinthians chapter 11 please we're reading from verse 26 to 30 my god may your eyes be opened in the name of jesus encounter with the body of christ so paul here was speaking about what we call the communion one of the sacraments that jesus left with the church and paul was bringing perspective because he found out that they were engaging in the communion unworthily and he needed to bring a theological understanding to their practice and here's what he said as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup ye do show the lord's death until he comes verse 17 he leaves a caution he says wherefore whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the lord next verse it says let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily 
the idea of eating and drinking does not necessarily it's not limited to just eating as you know are we together that the person who eats and drinks unworthily eats and drinks damnation to himself not discerning the lord's body not discerning the lord's body he's speaking here beyond bread he's speaking here beyond drink don't you think he's just talking about those elements no this is deeper than that and that there are consequences when you fail to discern the lord's body the consequence is found in verse 30. please give it to us for this cause for this cause something happened here sit down for this cause not few many are weak the word weak there means limited incapacitated many are sick and many sleep hmm. that there is such a tragedy that can befall a man befall a people because of an offense in the spirit that in the midst of all the encounters they had they failed to press in for one encounter called encounter with the lord's body the body of christ and that as a result regardless the value of other encounters you can be limited in life limited in ministry you can be sick and you can die when last did you stand at the grave of someone and they wrote there dead because of the consequence of not discerning the lord's body when last did you see an individual limited and he admitted that the cause of my problem is not just witchcraft and satan that i have failed to discern this mystery called the body of christ let's journey a bit tonight and trust god to give us understanding breathe lord breathe breathe lord breathe breathe upon my life breathe lord breathe breathe lord breathe breathe upon my life i receive i manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see jesus lifted up exalted i receive i manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see jesus lifted up glorify please be seated let's see how far god can take us this night there are consequences for ignoring the provisions that have been invested within the body of Christ. There are consequences for ignoring the spiritual investments within the body of Christ. The Bible tells us that those consequences range from limitations in life and destiny to infirmities that plague our bodies and sadly even death now there are two facts that i want you to get as we explore this very delicate subject number one that no single individual please listen no single individual can capture and reveal all the dimensions of god without interdependence on the larger body no individual no matter how yielded you are no matter how prayerful you are no matter how consecrated you are it is not given to an individual to capture the whole of god as a person 
now you can experience the whole of god but it can never be captured in your own experience alone without leaning on the larger body are we learning no individual can capture and reveal all the dimensions of god without interdependence on the larger body the second fact that i want you to know tonight is that there are various dimensions of god that will be needed in your christian experience that may not be captured in your personal experience with god let me take that again there are many dimensions of god that will be needed for the efficiency of your christian experience but will not be captured in your unique experience with god that means when god begins to train an individual he deliberately omits certain experiences that will be needed in your life but that no matter how yielded you are they will not be featured in your personal experience and that that omission is deliberate it will compel you to depend on the provisions that are scattered within the body are we together so no matter how yielded you are within the frame of your dealing within the frame of your experience with god there are certain dimensions of god you will never know from the lens of your experience and that that omission is deliberate so for instance if god is raising you to be an apostle or a prophet chances are excellent within the frame of your training you will never learn anything about excellence you will never learn anything about administration you will never learn anything about finances the scope of your unique training will not feature these things however the deficiency of them will tell on your life in the future that that omission is deliberate so when god begins to build a people he concentrates on the core areas that represent their grace and represent the dimensions of him they will serve to the nations the dimensions he reveals to them is not all that they will need in their life now here's where the problem is because obedience produces excellence you will find out that when you stay in the place of your training with God there are certain areas of your life that will excel because you stayed there to learn but the shocking thing is as you progress you will see that on the one hand you are excelling as far as the areas God trained you in are concerned but you will be failing in other areas and when you go back to God and say why this mix of success and failure he will tell you the remedy to this condition is that you must encounter the body of Christ are we together that the body of Christ has deposited within it other dimensions of God and other graces that are supposed to complement for the areas that were not captured in your training so if God is raising you to be a businessman most likely you will not learn through your unique training the dynamics of prayer and warfare it may not be there you will encounter the wisdom of God you will learn the principles of influence the principles of excellence leadership administration and you will find out that using those tools you have been given you will become an excellent leader except that when the devil now begins to attack you the bankruptcy of other sides of God that are deficient in your training can bring you down and the reason why God omits that is because someone else at another side if you're understanding me say amen. amen please help those under the anointing but pay attention this is very important so what we have in the body of Christ is that we have a lot of emotional connection to our trainings and how God trained us are we together now he's trained us in a certain way and because of lack of or poor mentorship many believers do not know that the tools that they will need for their wholesome victory is beyond the scope of that which God uniquely trained them in 
so they step into ministry or step into life knowing only the tools that were revealed in their personal place of training and find out that life seems to happen for them in a very bad way for instance a man of god can be greatly anointed learn the principles of consecration and yet be broke not understand the principles of influence and when you look at that man he's not a perfect portrait of the bride of christ and you'll be wondering what happened the man sometimes may ignore the area of finances because it was not captured in his training and I'm telling you that when God does not introduce a curriculum in your training, it does not mean you do not need it. It's because there is another person within the body of Christ who has been trained in that area. That person will be an extension of that lecture to you. But that if you fail to appreciate the investment of God that is scattered across various vessels in the body, there will be consequences. For this cause, many are weak. For this cause, many are sick. For this cause, many sleep. So when God is training you, you may not learn from that training the principles of longevity and impact because the kind of consecration it takes to dig into God and fish out those answers, it may distract what he's building you to become. Are we together now? Now look up please. Let me use examples that Reverend Julian gave here. How many of you know, as much as I know, that even though Reverend Julian is into real estate and so on and so forth, he may not necessarily be into construction of zincs, constructions of plumbing materials, but the house that he builds will need those provisions. And he does not need to bother because someone else has that as a specialty but if a building is going to be built it will need more than just being a real estate person you will need to bring in all these machineries are we together now imagine with me an individual who intends to build a house and the only thing he knows is to make bricks and mortar and he ignores the plumber ignores the zinc person ignores the electrician ignores the interior person Tell me what kind of house that will be. I hope that house is not you. Because there are many believers who desire to be an excellent portrait of what the bride of Christ is. But they do not know that beyond the scope of their training, there are many other things to learn. Please listen. There are many other things to learn. Many other things to learn. I like the way the Bible puts it. Jesus walked with his disciples for about three and a half years and he taught them diligently. But Jesus made a very serious admission. He said, I still have other things to teach you. That means my curriculum is not all you will need to be apostles. You can't be called apostles just by listening to all I've taught you alone. There are other things that need to be added. Are we together now? He said, you cannot bear them now. How be it? Receive what I'm giving you, but have in mind that the lecture continues. Are we together? Now, imagine the entire Bible having only the Gospels. There is a side of God you will never know. You will never know we are seated with Christ. Jesus never taught that. You would never understand the warfare of the believer. Jesus did not teach that. It was this strange man called Paul who came to bring the other things Jesus said will be taught. Are we together now? That the epistles began to give us perspectives on the believer's work, bringing frame to our Christian experience. It was Paul that taught on the gift of the Spirit. Jesus never taught on the gift of the Spirit. It was Paul that gave definition to certain Christian experiences. So when you talk about the Bible, even though Jesus is the word, the logos of God, you will still bring all of these dimensions together for the wholesome growth and development of the believer. Do you understand me so far? And now I'm teaching you that you imagine that the apostles only knew the writings of Jesus. They ignored the teachings of Paul, ignored the teachings of other believers. 
they would be lopsided people are we together now they had to embrace other dimensions to make them wholesome this is what is lacking within the body of christ so there are people with different pieces of god now look up please when jesus was having the last supper as we call it the bible tells us that he had said he was the bread and he broke himself into different dimensions it was not bread he was breaking it was a revelation he was showing he broke himself to various dimensions and gave the apostles not one of them had the whole bread are we together and that if you want to see the complete bread then you have to accept the contribution of everyone who is a holder of that peace that as great as peter is peter cannot represent no matter how large his portion is it cannot equal the entire bread not john not luke not mark so if you want to see that whole bread you will have to see what john is bringing plus peter are we together now yes now just because you saw peter holding a very generous um a very generous part of the bread does not mean that that's all the bread the challenge with the body of christ is because of the excellency of our unique contributions sometimes we become beguiled by our level of individual efficiencies to mean without any contribution my portion of bread is still equal to the whole but it is not true the best that anyone can be in this body is an effective member an effective member no one person equals the entire revelation of jesus as an individual is someone learning now so watch this jesus appears to paul on his way to damascus and having encountered jesus himself the logos of god you would think that Paul should not need any man. Why would you need any other man after encountering Jesus? But Jesus himself told him, go to the house of Judah and wait there. I will still send somebody to come and continue that dealing. As much as he encountered Jesus, Jesus never got him filled with the Holy Ghost. How do you encounter Jesus and instead of your eyes opening, you become blind? I thought when men meet Jesus, their eyes become open. But here is a man meeting Jesus and leaving his presence blind. And he says, not to worry. There's something I want to show you. Someone in my name, but not me directly, will come and open your eyes. And if you receive that man, you will receive the opening of eyes. Are we together now? If Paul rejected Ananias and said, I've met Jesus already, he would be a blind apostle. And he will misrepresent God you would think it was God's intention to leave Paul blind but his healing was not even in the encounter he encountered Jesus Jesus said you encountered me you cannot kick against the bricks yet his eyes were still blind and an ordinary brother but a member of that body an ordinary brother not Apostle Ananias not prophet ananias but an effective member of the body still holding a piece of that bed he said brother saul jesus whom you met had sent me that i should open your eyes and that you be filled with the spirit yes sir yes sir yes sir Naman, I know you are a great captain, but your intelligence does not capture within its experience how to be healed from leprosy. Be mindful of who you are pushing away because someone in your house holds the key. The Bible says one day the slave girl says, sir, don't be offended. I know you are a great man. You have revelation, but there's something I see in your life. You are still deficient. 
but that provision is within the body you are a great man of god but you are struggling financially this is not the will of god i i don't undermine your anointing but there is a provision in the body you have ignored and for this cause many are weak many are sick and many even die hallelujah i know you are praying and fasting but do you know there is somebody who has done business with god by covenant and has become an embodiment of the healing anointing you can pray and fast in your room alone but if you do not realize that there are certain things that are not captured within my unique experience but needed as part of the tools in my destiny it is scattered within this mystery entity called the body of christ the grace for speed the body of christ there are people who carry unique and strange graces they they through their pain they cry to the god of heaven and he showed them a dimension of his power they are an embodiment of God's favor. They go to any land and the gates open and you can be around them and still suffer. And heaven tells you this is not God's best. Your unique experience does not capture favor, but favor is needed in your life if you must give an expression of a wholesome believer. Is someone learning? An encounter with the body of Christ. Now the danger is this because you have obvious results in one area it may beguile you to think that the areas that are deficient in your life will cover up by themselves no sir no sir I wonder that Jesus the son of the living God had to be prayed for by Anna the prophetess and Simeon the prophet what for the word was made flesh did not have the sin of seed or I mean the seed of sin within him and yet when he arrived not even Jesus could excel they took him to the temple and a woman held him blessed him a man held him blessed him and when he met John, John said, Behold the Lamb. He would have said, John, I'm here now. Get out of the way. He said, No, suffer it to be so. I can't ignore your ministry. Even though I am the Savior, you will need me for your own salvation. But as far as my becoming is concerned, if I ignore the grace that is upon you, not even me will be immune from this consequence of weakness, sickness, and death. Number two, the Bible tells us that there were certain women who supported Jesus in ministry. Now I don't understand this. How does someone multiply bread in one moment and still be needing partners? If I have the ability to multiply bread and feed many people, would I need any partner? Yet the Bible is vocal as to the fact that there were people who came and supported him and he did not turn away their ministry when jesus was on his way to golgotha bleeding from all the lacerations he had received the bible tells us that he collapsed on the ground your bible fell with his cross and you would think because he were savior he would say no man don't participate in this he was so weak they called someone called Simon of Cyrene. Help him carry the cross and Jesus did not refuse. He said, please, I, this is the much needed help. Because if Jesus died on the ground, he would not be called sin. He needed to, be, to, to die on the cross to be called a curse. If he died on the ground, he could not be a curse. Cursed is he that hangeth on a tree. That the blessings of Abraham justification by faith might come upon we the Gentiles to the end that we receive the promise of the Spirit through faith is someone learning now so you can have visions of yourself doing great things 
and yet you find out that those engracings that are responsible for those dimensions you see in your dream and your vision were not within the frame of your unique training here is where my teaching lies tonight do you have the flexibility to understand that it may not be in my life but if it is within the body of Christ then I can access it if speed is not in my life but it is within the body of Christ I can access it if strength supernatural strength is not at work in my life but it is within the body of Christ I can access it are we together now this is very powerful many believers do not understand this dynamic I am confident that the sermons you've encountered have been a source of blessings elevating your life and inspiring a heartfelt commitment to serving God wholeheartedly we warmly invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel ensuring you stay connected and never miss any of our upcoming videos by activating the notification bell your subscription represents more than just a click it signifies a commitment to continuous spiritual growth enlightenment and empowerment embark on this faith-filled journey with us as our channel aims to be a sanctuary for both spiritual seekers and believers alike we firmly believe in the transformative power of god's word and our goal is to share messages that deeply resonate with your soul join our community subscribe and let the radiant light of divine wisdom illuminate your path thank you for being an integral part of this uplifting journey and may God's abundant blessings overflow in your life. Amen. You can follow us on all our social media handles at Flaming Channel and visit our website at www.flamingchannel.com. Thank you. And may God bless you abundantly.